Hi, hello, vanakkam and welcome back to yet another episode on Little Slaw YouTube channel. So in the recent days we were seeing about various performance continuous integration and continuous deployment development ways using Jmeter, the Neo Load and Load Runner with Azure DevOps and GitHub. So we will take a quick break in this video. So in this video we are going to see about how to use use the bean shell preprocessor so we are going to see how to use the how to use or how to create and how to use the bean shell preprocessor in this video so before we move on to the video i request you all to subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed yet so with no further ado let's go so before that i'm i have divided this video so we are going to see these following steps in the video so first thing first so we are going to create a thread group and after the thread group we are going to add a bean shell and generate a random number in it and then we are going to check whether it is created and we will pass the value in a request and then we are going to add another preprocessor which is the JSR223 and we will save the random number which we have, which we have generated in this step 2 in a file using the CSV dataset config and then at the end we will use another bean shell preprocessor to increment the random value so these are the files which you might require or you might need during your scripting where you might need to generate a random number or you might need to increase your increment your value the request where you are incrementing the counters in a random fashion so i believe this video would definitely help you so with no further ado, let's go to the video. So first step first, so we'll create a thread group. I'm right clicking on the test plan and adding the thread group. So I have added the thread group. So this step is done. The second step is adding a bean shell and generate a random number. So I'm adding a bean shell preprocessor. I'm right click on the thread group, going to add and then coming back to preprocessor and I'm opening the bean shell preprocessor. So what you're going to do now is you're going to write a script to generate a random number. So for that, let's first call the random library. Import java.util.random. So this is the library which you're going to call to create the random number. And then we will declare a variable just random as rand is equal to new random of. So in this way we have created we have initialized a new variable which is the rand and then we will create another random number which is an int so it's going to be integer random number which is equal to rand dot next of int so we are going to get random numbers between 0 to 100 100 and then we will use this vas dot put which will create and send the random number which we have generated to a string so we are converting so in this step we have initialized a new variable and then in line number four we are simulating the values from 0 to 100 as an integer and then finally we will not be able to use that as an integer directly so we are going to do like we are going to use that random number and we are going to pass it as a string to random number so the first step is completed and this is done the second step is done so next is passing the value in a request so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a http request and on top of it i'm going to add the value so the value is random number i'm just copying it from here then let me just paste it in the header the server name and then let's now add a view results tree from the listener and see how does it work so let me save this first initial processor This is going to be bean shell preprocessor 
demo let's run it so here we have got so here we can see the number is generated as 33 and then the, the second request is generated as 4 so the first bin shell processor is working fine so now let's move on to the step so the third step is also completed successfully and then let's move on to the fourth step which is adding the random number which we are generating in the first bean shell processor to a csv file because this will be really helpful when you want to pass the values or to save the values in a csv file so for that let's again click on thread group right click go to add and then again coming back to the preprocessor and we'll add the jsr223 preprocessor and in here we will type so we're going to write the value so for that we'll call the file writer fw is equal to new file writer and i'm going to copy the file or i'm going to create a file inside the location and it is going to be under bin the bean shell processor so i have a file which is csv.csv so i'm going to use this file so i'm pasting this location here and ending with csv.csv and then which is going to be followed by true so with this we'll complete the value so we are going to write the file values into this file now and then we are going to append the values. So for example, if we are running it for the first time and then when we run this test again, so the values will be added to the end. And the value is again, it's a random number which we have already declared in our previous script. So we are going to append it in the new line. And for that, we'll have to give the slash n, which is the escape character. And then if w.flush will flush any or will fl remove any unused spaces and then we'll close the connection so now we are good next step is going to be adding a csv dataset config because that is where we can define or we'll have the options to add the details so we'll go to add and then we'll add the post process uh, so it's a config element which is the csv dataset config and then the file name is going to be this slash csv dot csv and the variable name is random number so let's add the file name and nothing else so we just give the file name and then the variable name so just two items which we have to add and we are we are done with this step so let's run the test and we will see uh, let me just move this to the end before that let me just remove it and then i will add it again so listener is the view result stream so we are good so let's run the test and we will see how does it work running the test now and the value is 80 let's now open the file so yes we can see the value as 80 here so this step let's close this file and this step is also done and then finally the last step where we will add another bean shell processor and we will increment the random value and see how does it work so let me add another bean shell processor preprocessor bean shell preprocessor so this is going to be here and we will see what to do in this so we have the value which is the random number so we will what we'll do is we will set the value in the current value so we'll extract the value whatever we get from the script from the during the execution we'll get the value which is the random number and then we are going to increment the value so we'll again set the value to 
they're going to add so we can do any operations anything like subtraction or multiplication so any such operations is possible in this using this bean shell processor so we'll put the value in the random number and again we will send or we will convert the value to string and we will send the value again back to the current value so we're going to make one change here so what we're going to do is we are going to move this http request to the after the bean shell processor so so far what we have done is we have first created we have first generated some random numbers for each iteration or for each execution we'll get one random number and then we are writing that value the random number value into a csv file and then in this script we are adding the value we are incrementing the value to one from the generated value so let's see how does it work so i'm running the script now the script is completed running so we have got 48 here let's open the file and see so here we have got 47 so what happened here is we have generated the file which is 47 and that value is saved to the file and after that in this particular step the value the number is incremented to 1 and that is passed to the http request so with this we come to an end and i believe this video would have been very useful to you if you have any queries or any doubts regarding the preprocessors, please do message or ask me in the comment. Until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from Asan Shanmugam and Little's Law.